Blocks are a fantastic tool to manage state in your Flutter applications. And today, I'm going to show you how to test a block. Let's get to it. OK, so I have a block here. This is called a pet block. And it extends block, pet event, pet state. So we're taking in pet events. We're emitting pet state. There's also a pet repo that gets provided here in the constructor. Our initial state is pet initial. And then whenever we have certain events, we uh, call these functions. So on a load pet event, we call the load pet function, which is right down here. Uh, the same for the rest of these. Really nothing crazy. So I'm going to show you two really important things. So the first one is there's this package called block test by the people who make block uh, that makes this really nice and easy. Um, the second one is a package called mocktail. So I'm going to add both of these. I do already have. So if I pull up my pub spec, I do already have block test uh, right there. You can see that. Uh, it probably should be a dev dependency. I'm not sure why it's not. Uh, Makito as well, man, old project. OK, so we're going to go ahead and import Mocktail. And then we'll head back to our pet block. And I'll right click here. And if I create, or if I click go to tests, it will prompt me to create the test since I don't have any. So I'll go ahead and hit that green button there to create one. And it gives us a main method with a test widgets function. So what we want to do instead of using the test widget function is we want to use the new uh, block test. Um, there's a nice little shortcut right there, uh, and it looks something like this. So we have a pet block that we're working with, and we have a pet load. Uh, sorry, is it load pet? Load pet? It is load pet. Pet ID of, we'll say, one. And then we have the states that we want to model here. Uh, so we want a pet loaded. And we have a pet that we'll need to check against. OK, so there are a couple different things. So let's go ahead and import block test. And you can see that we're importing our pet block. Uh, we're importing our pets block, which we shouldn't need. OK. Um, and there's an argument missing here. And then we need to define this type. So we have a block test. This is the name of the test. So I'm going to go ahead and group this first. So we'll group it and say pet block. And then I'll come over here. I'll paste, let this format itself. And we'll give this test a name. So uh, handles load pet successfully. This is the name of our test. Now that we're here, we need to uh, create our uh, repo for our pet block, right? So if we look at this again, we can see that it takes in a pet repo. This pet repo is actually kind of big, and I don't really want to use the whole uh, an implementation of a repo on our tests. So instead, what I want to do is mock that. Uh, so I'm going to say class mock pet repo um, extends mocktail. Is it mock? Yeah, extends mock implements pet repo. Now what we can do is we can create an instance of this. So I have right here uh, a final uh, mock pet repo equals mock pet repo. OK, now we can pass that here. Mock pet repo that satisfies that contract since it's implementing pet repo. And then we have a pet, right? So final pet equals pet. Uh, yep, that's the one. Um, and then there are a couple fields that we need. Oh, actually, we don't need any fields, but we're going to go ahead and give it one. Uh, I'm going to say Luna, since this project's named after my dog Luna. Um, OK, so we have our pet. We can expect our pet to be loaded. This can't be const anymore, because that value is not a const. Um, I guess we could make it one, but that's not really the point. So if we run this, it's going to fail. I'm going to go ahead and let it run, and we'll see how it fails. Perfect. Null is not a subtype of stream pet. Mock pet repo get by ID. So mock pet repo is failing. So what we can do here is if we look at the mock tail 
uh, documentation here, you can see how to stub and verify behavior. So in our case, all we really need to do is use something like this when, so we can just paste this, and we want to say when mock pet repo dot get by ID, and then we know the ID is one, right? Because we are specifying it down here. Then return, uh, and we can take a look. What does this return? So mock pet repo returns a stream, stream dot um, from iterable elements. We have one element and that's our pet. Now, if we run this again, okay. Invalid arguments then return should not be used to return a stream, the use then answer. Oh, that's fair. Uh, when you're doing asynchronous returns, um, one of the requirements for mocktail is that you use then answer instead of then return. Oh my goodness, hard to type. So let's run this one more time. We should fail again, but for a different reason. Yeah, perfect. So you can see here expected pet loaded, but we got pet loading and then pet loaded. So our block is emitting two states. Why is that? Well, it's actually really straightforward. If we look at this, we emit pet loading and then we emit pet loaded. So we have a couple options. We can go back to our test and we can either add pet loading right here and run this and it should pass. It does. Or we have the option of skip one. So what we're saying with skip one is skip the first thing that gets emitted when you expect an output. So in our case, we would skip the pet loading and now we're just checking against pet loaded. One more thing that you could do if you're interested in it, like maybe we wanna validate that we are calling mock pet repo. Um, this test kind of does that for us because the way that we're stubbing it requires that it actually gets successfully called to return the stream that we later validate down here. So it's, it's a fine test as is. But I do think that if you wanted to go a little bit farther, you could, right? So we could say something like this with our stream. We can set a new variable called called and then say called is equal to true. If we look at our block test here, we can see a couple different things. So there's expects, there's verifies, there's errors, there's teardowns. There's a ton of documentation here, which is really fantastic. Um, verifies an optional callback, which is invoked after expect that can be used for additional verifications or assertions. Verifies called with the block returned by build. Okay, so what we can do is something like verify, and we can see that verify takes in, well, shoot. I had one on hand is called with the block returned from build. So if we go here, please. So this would be the block and we can expect that called is true. Let's run this again. Okay, that passed. And then just to make sure that this works, I'm gonna set that to false, yep expected false actual true. So if you needed to do an extra assertion or to validate that this was being called, you have this option. Um, fun fact, you can also do this with mocktail, so you don't have to set up a variable here and then change the variable here. You can actually reference this and then call like dot called on it to see if it was called or the call count or something. Mocktail is a really fantastic library for mocking and I highly recommend checking out more of it. I like this pattern because this pattern works across every language and I work in a lot of different languages. So this is consistent for me. So if you wanted to go farther, you would take this and you would basically stub out a new test for each um, event that your block responds to. So if we look at this, we would we did load pet, we would wanna handle delete pet, update pet, archive pet, unarchive pet, and add pet. But additionally, there's a couple other things we should do too. And this highlights some issues, right? So for one, this can fail, right? This, this totally can fail. This is an, a call that we have no idea what's happening outside from our blocks perspective. We have no idea what's happening with this call. And I'll tell you, it makes a network call uh, behind the scenes. And if it makes a network call, it definitely can fail. So maybe we should handle the fact that this could fail. Um, so how do you handle that? Well, it would actually be really similar. We would come back to our block and we could basically copy this and paste it 
Uh, the difference here is that we would need to change our um, pet repo stubbing, right? So we can't just put that here because if we tried, they're at the same scope, right? Um, and what we want to do, since this defines a test and then runs it afterwards, uh, what we want to do is instead we can leverage a setup function. So there's a setup like this. And um, we can take our second uh, block test right here, add a setup function like this. And this time we want this to, uh, I don't know, throw error, right? Something like that. Okay, this should meet that needs. So this is handles load pet when error. Let's run this and it should fail. It failed, look at that. Instance of error, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so we're throwing an error here, right? Uh, I don't really care about this called anymore. So I'm gonna remove this verify here just to keep things simple. And yeah, that's fine. We can remove it here too. It's not really relevant for this test anymore. Okay. Keeping this simple so it's a little easier to reason with. Uh, so we have this error that is happening here. When we load a pet, we are throwing an error. So how do we handle this? Um, the main issue is that our block isn't set up to handle this, right? So we try to do this. But if we catch an error, we probably need to do something else, right? So we could do pet failed. If we look at our test here, we have pet failed instead of pet loaded. And keep in mind, we're skipping that pet loading um, emission still. Great, that passes. I'm gonna run them both one more time. They both should pass, so I'm just gonna talk over it while it happens. But this is how you can set up block tests, literally using block test, uh, to handle scenarios where my block receives something and it needs to output something. Uh, this is how you can write those tests really nice and easily. So remember, don't just, handle the happy path, handle every path. And then a good way to know how many tests you should start with, for each one of these, you should have a test. I'm not gonna write them all on camera because it's gonna be a waste of your time at this point. Not much will change, uh, but you can see the one, two, three, four, five, six. You should have at least six pets. And if these can fail, you should have a permutation for each one that can fail. So for load pet, you should have two because you have a success path and a failure path. Uh, and here's a spoiler, delete pet should have two, update pet should have two, archive, unarchive, add. Those should all have two. Add might actually even have three because of the extra failure path in that one. Anyways, that's it. That's how you test your blocks in Flutter with block test and Mockito. Um, if you don't want to use Mockito, or I'm sorry, Mocktail, uh, not Mockito. That's how you use Mocktail. If you don't want to use Mocktail, you can use Mockito, or if you... Um, just want to, you can also uh, implement the mock yourself. Um, I originally was gonna do that. This pet repo is quite big, uh, so it would have been a bit of a pain to implement that. And Mocktail makes that nice and easy. Um, if you found this video helpful, don't forget you can subscribe to the channel to get more Flutter videos with tips, tricks, and other fun things. Uh, and then on top of that, if you've really found it helpful, send it to a friend who might find it helpful. You'd be their hero, my hero, and you'd make everyone's day a little bit better. Thanks.